Can I get four pineapple plants from one pineapple? Let's find out. All right, so many of you have probably already seen my how to grow a pineapple from a pineapple store-bought video. If you haven't, I'll put that in the link description below. But this is a test on an idea that's been floating around on Facebook where they use one pineapple to get four plants. So we're gonna test that out and see if it actually works. To start, we simply need a ripe pineapple with a nice green top. This one has been slightly gnawed on by my cats. Thank you very much, cats, not very helpful. To remove the top, you simply grasp it firmly at the base and twist. Ta-da! The pineapple we're gonna eat later. So now I have the, the leafy top and I want to remove these base leaves down here where they met the pineapple. And I'm just simply gonna just tear them off with my fingers. And as I'm doing this, I want to pay particular attention to the areas in between the separate leaves because there may be some root growth appearing in those areas already. If there is, I wanna make sure I don't inadvertently root those off. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the amount of leaves that I have peeled off. You can see this section here, and I'm gonna go ahead and give a close-up of that so you can see in detail what it should look like. So there you go, you can see the little bit of end of the fleshy part and then the ridges of where I removed the leaves. There isn't any apparent root growth, but I do see a little bit of nodules that indicate that's where roots are going to want to grow and hopefully will grow once I get to the next stage. Let me go ahead and put these excess leaves in my compost bin and I'll be right back for the next stage. Okay, so at this point, it is my understanding that I want to divide this in four this way. So I know how tough pineapple leaves are, so this may be a little tricky, but I do have a quality knife here, so let's see how I do. I think being careful in my knife placement before I start cutting is going to aid me greatly in making sure that I have equal distribution of the crown between the four potential new plants. And I have started cutting uh, with my weight pressing on the base because I know that's gonna be a more solid area for me to set my knife. And then hopefully that'll help keep my knife placement in leafed portion at the top of the crown. Okay, so slow and steady won the race on that one. I carefully continued to put pressure at the solid part and did a kind of rocking motion to cut through these leaves. And as you can see, I kind of had to saw and that rocking motion mimicked a sawing motion. So that way I didn't cause too much damage to my plant, but more importantly, I have remained to keep all 10 fingers. Uh, please don't go really quick and just karate chop through this. You may cause damage not only to yourself, but to your knife, your cutting area, and your plant. So I'm, I'm still pretty dubious at this part that this is going to work, but I am certainly excited about giving it a try. Now that I have two halves, I'm supposed to cut these then in half so that I have four. Uh, so let's continue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the flat side, the cut side down on my cutting surface because that's going to give me a more stable thing to cut on. Again, I'm going to carefully line up to try to get an equal distribution of plant material. And then I'm gonna start my cut by putting my weight on the, the bottom section here and then pushing on the dull side of my knife 
and then doing kind of a rocking. Yeah, see that, that mangles the plant rather severely, but hey, I'm worth it, giving it a try. All right, so we just have the last piece to do and it's the same scenario. All right, <laughs> this just seems so sad. Okay, so because it's nearly impossible to have things all equal, I do have some thicker pieces and some thinner pieces. So what I'm gonna to do to try to make this be as fair as a test as possible is I'm gonna have a thick piece and a thin piece started in just water and a thick piece and a thin piece started in dirt. So my dirt that I've placed in these small uh, potting containers is a mix of potting soil and perlite. I added the perlite to the potting soil because I know pineapple like to have well draining soil. And so I didn't want to have something that was going to be too moist, but I also wanted something that was going to be nutrient rich. So that way it would have every advantage given to the plant from the very beginning. I also want to investigate this bottom section and see if there's any excess fruit that I want to trim off that. Because if you have moist fruit remaining at the base of your plant, that could be a perfect area for mold growth to occur and that could kill the entire plant. So I'm just gonna trim just a little tiny bit off on that section. All right, so this is a nice, healthy, thick looking piece. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place that in the water. Now, my water level, I don't really want to come up higher than where I removed the roots. So I'm probably gonna to have to adjust that in this. And because this became a much smaller portion, I may actually want a narrower vessel so that it doesn't get so floppy. I can just see my cats trying to investigate this and mass chaos everywhere. So I, I may readjust that. But for now, that's a nice thick piece. So now I need a thin piece. Here's a thin one. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of this one sad leaf too. And then the fruit end. And then place that in there. Again, I'll have to adjust my water and my containers, I believe. And I'm gonna do the same over here for my potted ones. Remove the excess fruit section and then make a small annotation in the center with my finger and then place my, my cutting just to where I finished pulling off those, those base leaves. I don't really want the soil to go over the leaves that I, I left intact. And then with my fingers, I'm gonna compact that soil nice and tight around my cutting so that way it doesn't get disrupted and it can stay in an upright position. I did pre-moisten the soil before adding my cuttings, but I am gonna use my friendly handy dandy squirt bottle to give it another little drink, particularly around where I placed the cutting. At this point, I'm, I'm really concerned about the containers I have these pineapples in. I mean, they look like they're okay. I just think that's too much water. Actually, the way they're setting in here, I think is fine. I'm just gonna make sure that I remove the water just to that level right below the leaves where I pulled off, as I mentioned before. So at this point, I'm going to put the ones in water. Actually, to keep things fair, I'm gonna put all four in the same location. I have in two arrow garden units uh, for hydroponic growing just behind the camera. And I'm gonna place these there so that way they will get an even amount of light and have an even temperature and they'll be in the same environment without any external influences such as bugs, pest disease, whatever. And that way they will have an equal chance to do what they're going to do. If I see changes such as rot or root growth, that is when I'll be back to continue this video. All right, I'm back with my test subjects. It's been about a week and they're looking kind of sad. I really wasn't very hopeful for this. My, my biggest hope is that they would produce roots and perhaps produce an off sprout, which is known as a pup. Uh, because the way bromeliads and pineapples, part of the bromeliad family grow is from their center core. So if you cut the center core, then they really don't have a growth spot anymore. And I can see 
in the interior part that's not supposed to be exposed, that's now obviously exposed because I cut it, there's some mold and, and deterioration going on there. So I'm not very hopeful for any of these, particularly the, the potted ones. I just saw that one just flopped over again. The ones that I have in the water, I did switch to smaller vessels so that way they could stay upright and not be stressed and put uh, pressure from gravity on the leaves. They could stay nice and compact. This one looks the perkiest and I did change the water daily to help try to alleviate any bacteria growth and mold in there. But if I carefully remove the pot, the, the plant from its container and look at the center section right here where the new growth should be activated, it is all soft and kind of slimy, which is telling me, yeah, this plant's not gonna make it. I, I am gonna let them continue maybe a week more. I, I'm, I'm not seeing any root growth on the exterior. That was my, my one hope that might occur. So, so far, this hack is not hacking it. And we're back with the pineapple experiment. It's been roughly another week and some interesting developments have occurred. Now, I did have these into two separate glasses and just for Convenience sake, I put them in this one glass after I switched their water again because I basically have zero hope for them in doing anything than to continue to rot. Let me show you what I mean. So here in the glass, you can see there are no signs of root development whatsoever. But once I take it out of the water and show you in the light, you can see there are signs of rot, particularly in the core. Now, this is the interior section, where this is the exterior section. And the interior section is where new growth should be occurring. So if the interior is rotting, that means the whole plant is on its way out to die. Now, my only hopes of saving this was that if it did create some roots on the exterior, it may produce a pup, but there are no ro roots. There's no no signs of life. I, I think the the water is keeping these leaves as green as possible, and that is it. It's simply uh, moisture getting into the cell walls, but it has started to shed some of the interior leaves, which is definitely not a good sign. Let's look at the other specimen. This one you can see again. The interior is pretty much rotting. Even some of the leaves on the interior section of the bundle there are rotting. And again, no roots. Now, there is that one little guy right there. I don't know if I should continue the experiment just for that one little sign of hope considering there's been so much rot going on. And it's not just the watered ones that are showing rot. Let me show you close up here of the ones in the soil. There's actually a thin film, you can see it better in this one, of mold growth on the soil itself, particularly the perlite, which I don't think really should be growing mold. So that's really disappointing. I'm going to very carefully remove this sample to see if anything is going on under the soil to give us some hope. Nope, that looks even worse. We got obvious mold going on there. That is, that is not a good sign. And I'm not seeing any roots to speak of in that selection. Let's see this guy. This guy, its leaves just kind of collapsed and it was falling apart. As you can see here, it's it's a mess. Uh, yep, I'm not, I'm not seeing any signs of hope. So as far as this technique of dividing the core of one pineapple plant into four to create four pineapple plants, 
I'm going to have to say that hack has been hacked. It's not going to work. It's not hacking it. Haha. Ha. Can I say hack in any other way? Pretty sure I could, but uh, yeah. And I think the basis here is based on how bromeliads, which pineapples are part of that family, grow. So cutting the core is basically killing the plant. Again, my only hope was if it could create roots from that exterior portion and quickly put all its energy into producing an offshoot, then technically you could get four pineapple plants from one core, but the core is dead regardless. Okay, so it's been nearly three months, and as you can see, these are the little pineapples that could. Now, last I was with you, we showed you that there was some mold, there was some questionable growth on them, there was no root growth whatsoever, and I was pretty much done with the experiment. But I thought, hey, I have a bunch of extra pots, I have some extra soil, there's no harm in just cramming two of them into two pots. So there's two in here and two in here, and I put them out on my back porch, where they could get uh, indirect sunlight and I made sure to water them occasionally and it pretty much just ignored them. But they were right there so I could see them. And one day I went out and I was like, wait a minute, what is this? And what this is, I'm going to show you in just a second. When I was doing this experiment from the very beginning, my, my brain was saying the only way that this is going to work as if somehow there's enough nutrients, enough sustainability in those four sad pieces for it to go into emergency propagation mode and create pups. And that's what they did. Now a pineapple pup or sucker is this part right here. And they can come out either in between the different layers of leaves. You can see the profile. Let's see if I turn it to the light so you can see better profile of here, you can see the different layers of leaves and that it could come in between the leaves or it can grow at the very base like this one did. So there's a pup for this cutting and then on this side you can see the pup for the other cutting that I have in there. And then if we go to this other batch, you can see way down there in between the leaves is another pup. And then the final one, I haven't found a pup for it. I think that one, I think that one didn't take. So it looks like we just have three out of four, but check out how healthy this one is. It's like, it's ready to go. So by these cuttings, creating these pups, I now essentially have three new pineapple plants from one pineapple crown. So. It's a little misleading of the original information I got that you could grow four pineapples from one crown, but essentially that's what it did. It just took much longer than what was purported. So now that I have these pups growing from my cuttings, I can go ahead and either repot them or plant them directly in the ground. I have a complete video on how to grow pineapple, so you just continue to follow that video instructions based on these new pups. So there you go. Can you grow new pineapple from cuttings of a pineapple crown? Absolutely. It just takes a while. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Plate Life. <laughs> <laughs>